1930s. Take it from me, folks like Ricky Skaggs, Travis Tritt, Vince Gill, and all of us are pushing the envelope on this old southern sound into the 21st century. And tonight we've collected a great all-star band consisting of Mr. Jerry Douglas, Roy Husky Jr., Johnny Warren, Alan O'Brien, and David Greer. Give them a hand. What? Push us on into the 21st of a little tune called a Cincinnati Rag, brother. Now, the mid-40s were good times for bluegrass. At that time, Bill Monroe's band consisted of Lester Flatt, Chubby Wise, and Cedric Rainwater. But one Saturday night, a boy from North Carolina brought some magic with him from the mountains when he showed up at the Grand Ole Opry to audition with his new three-finger style of banjo player. And that's when the Dream Band was formed. And I think that's the moment that the sound we know as bluegrass music today was born. And that new kid in town is right here in the front row. Earl Scruggs, take a bow. Hello, Earl. Alan O'Banion brings some of that fancy Scruggs banjo picking around and singing one called the White House Blues. Go! almost killed bluegrass, but the Air Castle of the South, I'm talking about WSM and the Grand Ole Opry, discovered television and folks rediscovered bluegrass. Watch this. And then the big biscuit hit for Lester and Earl. Loretta, you might remember this and Johnny Warren. Now you bake right, uh huh. Martha White, yes, ma'am. Goodness gracious, good and light, Martha White. For the finest biscuit cakes and pies, get Martha White silk rice and flour. Hey, for no purpose, flour. Martha White silk rice and flour's got hot rice. And give us a hundred for it, wouldn't it? And then the 60s. Took hands with a lot of new friends. Folks like Jerry Garcia, The Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie came with his songs. And our new friends discovered some of our old songs, like this one right here. One Wiley and Zeke out of the Carolina Mountains group called The Salty Dog Blues. Alan, watch this. <laughs> I'm 
standing on the corner with a low down blues, great big hole in the bottom of my shoes. Honey, let me be your salty dog. Oh, let me be your salty dog, or I won't be your man at all. Honey, let me be your salty dog. I'll jump. And then we moved into the 70s, and Bluegrass went to college. And college got a whole lot more than an education. There was Woodstock, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Dueling Banjos, Bonnie and Clyde, and a whole lot of hippies. <laughs> It caught on to our music. They loved us. Earl Scruggs kept innovating. He didn't renovate, he innovated. <laughs> he took heat for getting involved in peace demonstrations, and the times were more than a changing. Earl pioneered a country rock band with his sons and called it the Earl Scruggs Review, and they played songs like this with people like Bob Dylan called the Nashville Skyline Rag. Back when I first, thank you. Back when I first heard bluegrass, I remember it being called Saturday Night Music. And after I got to play in bluegrass and met all the players, every night was Saturday night. <laughs> that's the truth, and that's still that way. I want to thank you so much for all the Saturday nights and the and Friday mornings, noons and nights too. I love you so much. Yeah, I remember the night I, I was inducted to the Hall of Fame. Of course, I, I didn't. I, I, there was four or five of us, you know, but uh, I didn't think that I would be. But when <coughs> Glenn Campbell said the, the feller with the little glasses and the big boots, <laughs> then I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> There's only one place on earth where you can... Thank you. In country music, there's so much creative collaboration. Artists searching for a song that becomes a hit. We're going to tell you about two people who created magic together. One is a singer, and the other is a record producer who also has a great career as an instrumentalist. Here to tell you about him first is CMA Entertainer of the Year, Vince Gill. If you've ever been to Nashville, uh, to the Country Music Hall, you've probably seen this guitar in there. This has been on display there for quite some time. It uh, belongs to a man that, to me, uh, is a, the greatest guitar player that ever lived. He's the youngest member ever inducted into the Hall of Fame, and uh, his name is Chet Atkins. I don't need to tell you that, but this was Chet's first guitar, and uh, it gives me goosebumps just to sit here and hold it and, and just wonder... If, uh, if this thing could talk, what it would say, and the stories it could tell about Chet and learning to play the guitar when he was a little boy. Um, it means a lot for me to have the chance to, to say thank you and uh, congratulations to Chet and all the rest of the, the wonderful, wonderful legends and uh, Hall of Fame members, Country Music Hall of Fame. Without all of you, I, uh, I wouldn't be here tonight and have the opportunity to have learned the music you taught me. 
Um, so I appreciate it. And, and Chet, in honor of you and this first guitar, I've got my first guitar right here. And uh, I'm going to attempt to play I think one of the first songs I ever learned that you played. Have a great night. Chet's second career is record producer, which brings us to our next member of the Hall of Fame, Eddie Arnold. 850,000 country music lovers make their pilgrimage to see and hear their favorites at his new home in Opryland, USA. You need to go there and ride the flume zoo. <laughs> <laughs> and every year new names are being added to the list of Opry favorites. I'm talking about hot country stars like Clint Black, Patty Loveless, Vince Gill, Emmy Lou, Travis Tritt, Joe Diffie, and Allison Krauss. And Marty Stewart. Absolutely. Performed side by side with legends like Porter Wagner, That's right. Hank Snow, Little Jimmy Dickens, and Grandpa Jones. Grandpa. But a name that will live in everyone's heart is an entertainer who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1962, the king of country music. From the great Atlantic Ocean to the wide Pacific shore. From the queen of flowing mountains to the cowbell by the shore. She's mighty tall and handsome, she's known quite well by all. She's the combination on the Wabash Cannonball. There was a magnetism around Roy Acuff when you were on the stage with him that I've never seen around anyone else in uh, my history in country music. What a marvelous entertainer and what a great personality on stage. Well, I think Roy Acuff had one of the best ways of He could handle a show better than anybody I've ever seen in my life. Get more on a 30-minute show than anybody that I've ever seen. He never put himself above us anywhere we were at. He, he was just always one of the boys and uh, but you knew he was the boss, you know, and uh, uh, I just, and this was one of the greatest men I guess I ever worked for. As the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry, uh, it's great to be part of such a long-standing tradition, the tradition of Roy Acuff, among others. Uh, Mr. Acuff influenced a great many musicians, one of which is the master musician, Mr. Mark O'Connor. Roy Acuff, he meant a lot to me because I first met him when I was 12 years old. and It was right here at the Grand Ole Opry. He represented to me somebody other than the king of country music. He was somebody that I even had more of a personal connection with uh, because we shared the same love, the fiddle. I represented uh, the biggest supporter of fiddling in country music. And he always like to hear me play a tune, especially when I was a little boy, and uh, I played old favorites of his for him. And uh, the first week I came into Nashville, back then, back in 1974, uh, somebody saw me play at a little club, uh, sitting in with Brother Oswald and Charlie Collins, two of his band members. They brought me backstage to the Grand Ole Opry, and, uh, had me play for him in his dressing room. He started calling out tune after tune and, and uh, requesting tunes that he used to play when he was a lad and, and uh, his grandfather used to play. And before long, he said that Opry with me. And uh, that's what happened. I played Dusty Miller and uh, Encore and that's what really got me going in Nashville all those years ago. I'd like to play a... And he always wanted to hear the old Tennessee Wagner. Thank <laughs> you. 
Cowboys designed Wrangler cowboy cut jeans to be comfortable with the music, the memories, and all the romance, heartache, and excitement of America's favorite music at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. This truly has been an evening of country greats. But you know what? I, I don't know about the security here, but they let a couple of guys on stage. This guy over here says he's um, Jeff Hanna with Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. And this guy right here says he's Travis Tripp. <laughs> all of us to perform the hits and pay tribute to the artists who have made country music America's music. The members of the Country Music Hall of Fame lit the flame and the Country Music Foundation pledges itself to keep this flame burning brightly. We look forward to next year and another evening of country greats. And to close the evening, we want you all to join in on a classic country great originally recorded by the Great Carter family in 1935. Carlene, as a third generation cutter, why don't you just start us off? All right, yeah. here we go. Woo! I was standing by my window on one cold and cloudy day when I saw that first come rolling for the carry. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? Is the better all the way in the sky, Lord, in the sky? So I told the undertaker, undertaker, please drive slow. For this body you are hauling, Lord, I hate to see her go. Will the circle? 